All right, here it is, the old PV Viper that's uh, that doesn't work. We're going to troubleshoot it and see if we can bring some life back into it. We're going to stitch uh, some videos together, do some troubleshooting. So uh, here it goes. And no, it does not come on. Got the plug into the very act, raise the voltage. Nothing. So, no, it does not work. And so, this is the Viper out. Laying on the bench. First thing that I want to do is test the fuse. See if uh, the fuse is still good, and I'm going to do that in the star kit. And the fuse is definitely blown. Even in the circuit, if it was still, if it was good, it would definitely let you know. So there's no way that you're going to get an open, open load, and it still be good. So that's a start. Okay, here's the output module. I've just taken it off out of the chassis. Here's the fuse down here. Well, PV gets this board from Japan or whoever. And for cost's sake, I imagine they don't put a, an external fuse holder somewhere where you can get to it. And just slap it right there on the board. So when it blows, you have to take the entire amplifier apart instead of simply reaching back behind it and putting in a new fuse so I'm, I'm going to change that okay the output modules out I'm just going to flip it around and remove the fuse and solder right there in there and then uh, I'm going to solder a couple of wires and mount the fuse on the chassis on the back here so it can be easy gotten to. Alright, here we go. Alright, I've done some uh -huh. done some work on this uh, fuse. Just heat, heat the joint up on the back and you know push it through with the with the iron tip itself and it'll come halfway out and just flip it over. <coughs> Use the iron as a, uh, a bit of a crowbar heat up the joint and then lift the leg. Do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to try to uh, well, that's no good. Already got one leg lifted. It's kind of hard to get to the other side so but basically the idea is Grab one side of the fuse, heat up the other leg without melting all the wires. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of close. Oops, the side of the way. Yeah, that's more I need to get through with the iron. Wouldn't be as, as bad if I wasn't trying to videotape this, but no worries. Just heat up the other leg. And tug. And there it goes. No more fuse. Probably gonna do this work off camera, so I'll have more room. But some wire tinned first. It's not gonna go through that hole. Let's heat up the joint, poke it in through there. Then I'll flip it around and make sure it's soldered to the pad. Let's 
see how it goes. All right, so I got the output module put back in. All the screws are screwed in. Of course, you can see here's the, here's the two wires. But I bypassed that fuse. It's actually just one wire. I just took both ends of it for now instead of trimming it. <clears throat> but, um, From looking at the board, I don't really see any signs of components failing that you might normally see, like discoloration. It's kind of hard to see some of the larger uh, resistors like this one that have any visual failures other than on the ends where the wires are, you might see a little bit of uh, soot. But you know, even the good ones that are working show signs of age and use. But more importantly than that, smell. If you've ever opened up an amplifier that has blown up, you'll not mistake the odor of burned up transistors. This output device here is actually an op amp. It is not a transistor itself. It is a it's a different package as say a LM741 or I forget what the package is called. But this is a this is an output circuit all in itself, so it's an operational amplifier. Whereas the amplifiers of old use discrete. Uh, you know, a, a component as just a transistor. This has all that built into the package. So I guess somebody realized that, hey, they could put all that stuff on a piece of ceramic and make one device. But yeah, no bad smells, no foul odors. So that's why I think I'm probably going to put that external fuse holder in there. The only fuse that I have close to 3 amps is a 2.5 amp, but that'll work. You wouldn't want to exceed that, but a little less is okay. You should at least be able to power it on and uh, hopefully be able to power it on. See how she looks with the external fuse holes. So there's my hole. Right through the caution risk of electric shock. Do not open. Sticker label. Yeah, it's the biggest drill bit that I've got. I have to finish it up with uh, the old Dremel tool and round abrasive thingy. Let's see how that goes. Fixing to grind away a lot of this aluminum with that Dremel tool, but uh, whew, bright light. Put a piece of paper towel behind there to catch all the aluminum shavings instead of just letting them fall where they may, because it's kind of difficult to get all that out of there. And there's my fuse holder, external fuse holder. But yeah, it's way too small. I got a lot of Dremelin to do. Well, that's about 15 minutes with a round file. And now the fuse hold up. It's hold on. Send it off all the burrs on the back side so it'll fit nice and flat. So, work on that and get it better. Well it ain't super sexy but it'll work. So that's it. That's the uh, external fuse holder.
Sounds like it works. <laughs>